everybody. I'm Christine Chavon, and our show is Spiritual Exploration. Tonight, we're going to talk about karma. I believe in karma. I believe what you do comes back to you. What goes around comes around. And uh, I have here with me Adelfina Shepherd, who's going to tell us all about how that happens and why. Hi, Adelfina. How are you doing? Hey, Christine. How I'm doing nice great. To see you. <clears throat> yes, and I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, every month I see you. You come here with Tommy G, and yeah. you do the show uh, God's Way, Yakive. Yeah. And you're on right after I am. Uh, I'm on at uh, 10 p.m. on um, uh, Channel 79, Time Warner, and 35 uh, Fios on Friday night. And you're on right after me. Right after that. That's right. That's yeah. That's right. Yes, it's wonderful. Um, but now we're here to talk about karma. And I would like to ask you, the first question I would like to ask you, uh, explain karma. Uh, give us the definition of karma. What does it mean and what, and, and what is it all about? Well, to me, it's simply cause and effect. I mean, what you do and then how it affects you in return. That's yeah. all karma is. It's not a punishment. A lot of people think, oh, my God, God is punishing me. But nothing could be further from the truth because it's a reflection of what you did. That's right. You brought the, it on yourself. God didn't do it. You did it. Yeah. And you know, the interesting thing is people don't realize there's good karma, too. Oh, yeah. You do something wonderful. You, you, you're asking for something wonderful to happen to you. Right. Well, you know, it's funny because I had understood someone told me, one of the psychics told me that um, – I have five, life, five lifetimes of ca good karma coming back to me in this lifetime. I said, good, I like the sounds of that. Well, how do you know? <laughs> well, you know, uh, I think I'm pretty much taken care of by the, uh, God and by the hierarchy most of the time. Oh, I do too, yes. Of course, all of us want more money and the most beautiful house, a nice car, this and that. But, you know, God does not supply that. You know what I mean? He, d he doesn't supply that. He... Um, so, you know, it's really fruitless unless you work for it and, and materialize it, you know, for that to happen. But wonderful things like if I've done something good for you and it doesn't even have to be in this life. It could have been five lifetimes ago and in this lifetime. It'll finally come back. Yeah, it'll come back, you know. And, and sometimes it's not even in the way you would expect. Like if you did something to me. Um, and, or I did something to you, it may not even come back from either one of us, the deed. You know, karma can come from another person. In other words, somebody else might do something to you or for you that makes up for whatever it is that one of us would have done. Let, let's say um, in, in some lifetime, uh, you know, maybe you were a criminal, and so you stabbed somebody to death, right? Well, then it doesn't have to be the person that you stabbed to death that comes back and stabs you, uh, you to death. It can be anybody. You know what I mean? However the circumstances prevail. That would be negative karma, of course. Of course, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, but, you know, it's a funny thing because, I mean, I am the type of person I am, and I would never stab somebody or shoot somebody or kill somebody or anything like that or even harm a person or even an animal, okay? But, um, but in... I'm feeling that, um, I mean, that in a past lifetime, I don't see me having been a, a criminal. Oh, well, that was just an example. Well, I know. Yeah. They say that some people can have oh, yeah. been, but I don't really feel well, like... Well, maybe, you know, let's think of it like this. Perhaps you were a soldier, and, you know, soldiers are basically licensed to kill. Yes. You know, as are cops. Right. You know, and uh, yes. CIA, FBI, All and or whatever. You know, you may have been thinking you did the right thing. However, you may have been led astray. You know, I mean, it doesn't mean, but all of us have played at one time or another the a dark side, the dark side, mm -hmm. and we've also played the good side. Really? No, nobody's immune to that, yeah. Really? So in other words, I could have been a bad person in another life. Oh, yeah, because, you know, uh, as souls, we come in to experience all facets of, uh, of life. And, you know, so it would just be a curiosity thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I think in the next life I'll be bad, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just because you've never been bad. Well, yeah, but I really don't want to be. <laughs> right. But, you know, just like these actresses, um, some of them relish the part of playing a villain 
you know they really get into it because Being they're playing it on the screen yeah because they've been a good person all their life so it's fun for them to be the oh, villain something like that yeah sure. i mean i could i could um, get into something like that sure if i was an yeah. actress playing a villain mm -hmm. i mean look at angelina jolie over there yeah yeah but she is a villain anyway so it's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. Well, you know, first of all, most people don't know that there's many different categories of karma. Um, there's personal karma, and that would be what you yourself did. But, and that's easily to understand, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the toughie for me. There's family karma. Family? Yes. What your family does? Yes. Will be something that could come around to you. Yes. In other words, oh, if wonderful. your brother is bad mm -hmm. and he does bad things, you, uh, he gets egg on his face, but so do you. Really? Yeah. Well, I imagine that if you had a family member that was going around doing bad stuff, that it would be a reflection on your family. Oh, yeah, but I, I don't even mean like that. I mean, you literally build up the karmic bank with them. Uh, I, I had a uh, friend, for instance, who one of her brothers was a criminal, and he got so used to being in prison <laughs> that, you know, it was just normal for him because he was just like a bad seed. Right, right. And uh, she was actually afraid of him. Oh, and okay. um, um, when he got out of prison and so forth, and that he would hurt her. And um, so in his case, whatever he did also reflected on her, uh, the, karmic, the family karmic bank. And um, and so, but people don't realize that. They said, I never did anything wrong. Why should I get family karma? But you do. Yeah, yeah, huh? So that was a big shocker for me. Well, I'm really glad that none of my family is criminals or anything like that. Or bad, you or know bad. what I mean? Or bad. And they're not, may not, they're not perfect people, but they're not out to hurt anybody. They're not bad people, which is good. So periodically, um, we run uh, family karma because that builds up across the board. Because I, I check my own karma. My own karma was over 51% expunged on my 50th birthday. Spirit sent me a symbol in my uh, courtyard, and uh, and then I, of course, I was cute on, on my birthday, and they always give me some kind of a present on my birthday and Christmas, and um, so it was very interesting to see, and uh, we analyzed it and psychically found out what it meant, and I was thrilled. So what did it mean? Well, it meant that my karma was had passed the point where, uh, see, people don't know it also, but. Generally speaking, you need 51% of your karma to be absolved before you can ascend. Uh -huh. So in other words, people who haven't absolved their karma can't, uh, can't uh, ascend. Now, so in other words, then you have to really absolve your karma before you die. Right, and this is the li lifetime where there's so much negative and chaos playing out because people knew that this is their last lifetime if we ascend to absorb their karma and, and ascend because um, people don't really know about this ascension as much as they should. So let me explain it a little bit. Ascension is basically um, evolution for the human, moving on to a higher state of human, of evolution. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have to master certain lessons. And as you master them, you move on to the next level. Right. And you get a test. That's the scary part. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Being tested. Yeah, you get, you get tests. And, um, and so uh, basically, it's not that complicated. It's just that are you ready or not to be a, a better, more evolved human? Uh huh. You know? And um, people don't know this for the most part either. They believe that everybody ascends. And the theory is for this lifetime that uh, all of the souls have agreed to ascend 100%. And um, I don't know if that's true or not, to be honest with you, because, uh, in fact, Tommy quoted me something over the phone today about a quote from the Bible, um, and I don't remember exactly what he said, but the point is that if you don't reach ascension, your soul is not totally immortal. And then you have to come back. Then you, no, maybe the game is over. Oh, but if your soul is not totally immortal, then what happens to it? It goes back into the, through the sacred fire, into uh, the monad, into God, or to your oversoul, and the oversoul absorbs the experiences and life lessons of that aspect of it, and th that that aspect of the monad it can be no longer. 
Well, I'm sure that I and the audience really have no idea what you just said. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, let me explain that. Um, God is the prime monad. He's one. Basically, we all come from God. Right. But God wanted to experience himself, so he created other monads who, out of himself. And then it's my understanding that most people or aspects can each have 12 aspects. That means 12 different people of themselves. Like in 12 a, different personalities? Uh, yeah, in different timelines. Like there could be 12 Christines running around. Have you ever heard you have a twin? Oh, yes, I've heard that many times. Me too. So there's there's someone around who looks just like just us, like right? Mm -hmm. And they're probably an aspect of the same monad that mm -hmm. we, you know, that they look like us and so forth. But it can also be in other timelines, other dimensions, and so on. You mean like a, a doppelganger? Yeah, exactly. An aspect is a doppelganger. They're just, they mean the same thing. Right, okay. So now a doppelganger would be a, 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 a soul that's kind of attached to you? in some way or, or somebody that looks exactly like you no a doppelganger is an aspect of the monad okay. so um let's say um let's say you're a monad and that's your primary soul up in heaven and then the the soul wants to stay up in heaven so it says okay i'm going to create another me and i'm going to call her christine chavone and she's going to go into earth or Venus, or wherever the monad decides, and uh, and live there and experience and so forth. So once you ascend that aspect, if it's if it has passed all the tests and everything, now becomes immortal. Uh -huh. So now, if you've if you've ascended and passed all those tests and so forth, that means that now you're your own monad and can exist through evermore. As your, as your own self. Now, you can have monads. Uh-huh. So, in other words, that I might have a, a, a soul that's up in heaven that I sent this soul that I have here down to. Right. The, um, the, the main soul always stays up there in heaven. I mean, it's, it's enormous. It, if we tried to take the whole thing into our body, we would be, it would be impossible. You, you couldn't exist. Mm -hmm. So, it's just a tiny piece uh -huh. yeah see. so then we come here we we uh, uh we want to have experiences and, and 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 such now getting back to the subject of the the karma though mm -hmm. um when we are let's say we're, we're we're good people and we we do good deeds all the time and everything uh we can expect good stuff to come back oh exactly and if you're doing bad things and trying to hurt people or animals or Mother Earth, uh, you can expect to have not such a good time. Right, exactly. Now, usually that happens right here. I mean, sometimes you even see people getting instant karma. I remember watching a thing on uh, television where this, uh, this guy was standing next to a pool, and another guy came by and pushed him, and he fell in the pool. But when he pushed him, he slipped and fell in himself. <laughs> exactly. That's instant karma. That's instant karma. <laughs> instant karma. And that's good for you. He turned right. He pushed the guy in the pool, and then he went and then fell in himself. Right, right, right. You know? So, um, you know, as far as that's concerned, but I really, um, okay, so now our our souls, uh, good or bad, we, 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 we innate karma for ourselves. Right. Now, right. <clears throat> now karma, the word alone, where when somebody hears it, it should give them the, the um, ability and the, uh, put it this, you know, the, the wanting to do something good so that they can get something good back. You know, I would think that, you know, but then again, then that's not the way we humans operate. Well, the intention is there, you know, the intention is the good thing. Like, um, you know, right now, in fact, Dr. Oz has something going on where he talks about, um, I was on one of a show. I just caught a few minutes of it, but he, he's asking everybody for a week to go out and do a kind thing. So let's get some kindness and goodness flowing. And I think that's a, a wonderful thing to think of. You know, I really do. Oh, it absolutely is. I know that there is uh, a day. I don't know what day it is of the year, but there is a day that it is set aside for be kind to people today. Oh, I wonder if it was that day when I caught it. I, I'm not Could've sure. Because this was just this past that week. Set aside, be kind to others day. Okay. You well, know, that makes do, sense. Do, and, and as a matter of fact, if you ever saw the uh, 
the the movie with um, um, Friedman. What's his name? Um, uh, the 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 black actor, really good actor. Um, anyway, though, Morgan Friedman. Oh, oh, I like and him. He did a show about God, and he played God. And oh he, yeah. And he was out in the desert with uh, the other fellow, the one that played the forty uh, the forty year old virgin. What was it? I forget. It was yeah. on The Office. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. so what happened? Um, um, all of a sudden, this dog shows up. And all of a sudden, you hear the dog lapping water. The dog was thirsty. They were in the desert. All right? And that's when Morgan Friedman turned around and told uh, the other fellow, he says, you have to have acts of random kindness when it comes to people and animals. That's the way God wants it. He wants acts of random kindness. And that is what would bring good karma. Oh, yeah. Well, um, you know, um, we all are our brother's keeper, and this is what we've lost in this day and age. You know, I mean, in, in ancient of days, if a stranger came through the desert and they were dying of thirst and they were hungry, you fed them, you gave them water. If they needed clothing, you did your best, and then, you know, after they were okay to travel, they went on their way. Can you imagine that happening today? <laughs> You no. know, maybe they put them up in their home or the barn or wherever, but right. they took care of each other like that. Yes. Um, and so we've gotten away from that to we a have. degree. We have. There are a lot of good people that are doing good things, though, like the people who do the soup kitchens, the people who do the animal shelters. Right. Um, you know, there is good out there, the people who collect warm coats for the people in the winter, right. um, the people who distribute um, toys on Christmas. I mean, and there are a lot of good organizations oh, out sure. there and good people who participate in them. That's right. Like the Salvation Army is one really good organization. I give to them whenever I see them get the bell outside of the supermarket. They're, that's a good organization. They do a lot of good things for people. One day I saw a list of all, what all these charities actually um, um, donate to the poor. And I don't remember the Salvation Army, but some of them donate a, a tiny percent while they're making all now their the owners CEOs rich. The $600,000 a year. The CEO of the Salvation Army gets $13,000 a year. Okay. That's why I, I... Oh, that's good. That's why I would give readily to them more than anybody else. Yeah. Now, um, maybe we should talk... We have a lot more to do, so yes. maybe we should talk about the next one that I, I find uncomfortable, is ancestral karma. Oh, wow. That's a biggie because, as it says in the Bible, you suffer the sins of your fathers going back seven generations. That's right. That's true. Yeah, I bet. That's true. And people who have families who are involved in things that uh, weren't very good, and, um, you know, you have the responsibility <coughs> of taking care of that. And I don't know what my ancestors did, but I'll tell you what, one time the, the information came through was to clear emotionally and karmically um, all my ancestors all the way back um, seven generations or was it five I think it was seven and um, and to uh, do karma transmutation on ancestral on both sides mother and father uh -huh. that's, that's a lot that's of people if you think that, about yeah. that you go look at this, the tree going back seven it's like big yeah a lot of people a lot of people and in those people, there must have been people that weren't too nice. Right, right, Can right. Can it work in reverse, though? Like, say, friend, we're here. I'm doing good stuff. Right. I feed animals. I feed people. I do this. I do that. Can it go and revert back so that their karma can start clearing out a little bit? Well, when you do that, see, actually, um, the good deeds will follow and help. But you know what? The truth of the matter oh. is, is so that you don't incur that karma is you really need to have that cleared. Now, when I say cleared, I mean transmuted into love light. That's the key because there are people out there who know how to do karma clearing, but that's the wrong word. The right word is transmutation into love light because if you do karma clearing, what that does is it releases it for it to then come back and you pay it. Oh. So let's say you have this much karma that you have to transmute and if uh, if you transmute it you may only pay this much like let's say you know you you had karma to pay and what that was going to cause was you were going to fall down the, the steps and break an arm and a leg well now maybe you'll just stub your toe 
that's the power of karma transmutation. And um, so that's very, very, very important. And that actually may be the largest accumulation of karma because we're going back generations, yeah, generations. Seven, seven. Yeah, so that really is true to my surprise. I was very surprised when I found out that was true. So how do you transmute your karma? Well, um, as you know, all of my work is it's energy medicine, it's faith, and it's prayer. Because I have found over the years that when I, when I started putting that together, when I first started practicing energy medicine, um, I was taking frequency balancing, but there were no prayers involved, and we were working with ascended masters. And, you know, the techniques were awesome and so forth, but it, all of it made me a little bit uncomfortable. I felt like there was something missing. And then uh, I learned uh, from going to um, a new church called Living Faith Christian Center where they actually do faith healing. And um, I, I thought to myself, that's what it's been missing, the prayer and the faith. And I started uh, getting information on my own and, uh, and putting these two together, and that's when miracles actually started to occur. Yeah. Yeah, so everything is a prayer. And, in fact, because I was rushed today, I was short on time, I didn't get a chance to put it on my website, but I, I fully intend to, within the next day or two, to put the karma transmutation prayer on my website. And, and the website on my website yeah. adolfinashepherd.com and uh, one of the keys to remember is at the most you can only do uh, one every two weeks at the most because karma can snowball one what every two weeks run a karma transmutation session with the godhead with father god now why can't you do it more than once it snowballs it can snowball especially if you're just clearing it i actually we, we used to have a place where we where we all met a whole gang of us and did karma transmutation. We were meeting at a woman's house and it spiraled out of control so bad because they were clearing, not transmuting, that her husband actually died and all these crazy stuff happened around her house. So instead of just uh, releasing this much and you stub your toe, he died. Oh they didn't just break a leg. I mean, but it was a long, convoluted story what they went through. So dying was a karmic thing? Yeah. He spiraled into uh, um, an upright uh, executive into um, an alcoholic who couldn't work and lost all hope. And, you know, uh, and then eventually, um, I guess you might say, he drank himself to death. And you see, you think all of that was karmic? Mm hmm I do, because um, it was, at that time, we were clearing karma. I didn't know that we had to transmute, transmuted is the key word. Now, someone said to me not long ago that karma is not a punishment, it's a lesson. Right, exactly. So whenever, like, say, for instance, you know, you've done a few things, you um, hurt a friend or... Uh, when you know betrayed someone or or beat somebody up or whatever for no reason and um and you have this this bad karma coming to you but when it happens it's not supposed to punish you for what you did it's supposed to teach you right a lesson in why you shouldn't be doing that right because you know uh the main thing is you learn to feel what the lesson is you feel what you did to that person so, um, and it's the same is true in all aspects of life with your mission. For instance, you know, before we incarnate, we sit down with a team and with God and we say, okay, we want to learn this, 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 and this. Well, guess what? If you don't awaken and, and learn those things, you got to come back till you learn it. Well, that's right. That's, that's just like the discussion. That's I had the lesson with Mary we're talking now yeah. about past lives. If you don't do it right now, you got to come back. Right, and that's part of karma because you, you said you were going to come back and learn this, and you didn't. So you did not fulfill your mission. So now you get to do it over again until you learn. Right. Yes, keep doing it until you get it right. Right. So that's the that's the thing about your, your mission and your incarnation and also karmic because karmic is lessons. It's true. So in other words, like somebody who just doesn't make the right decisions – doesn't do the right thing by other people, et cetera, et cetera, it has to do it over again. Right, and you know, there, there's more. Believe it or not, there's more because the next step is world karma. 
Now imagine with all these wars and all the people that have been killed. That reflects on us individually. Yeah, we're part of the Even earth. Even though we, are, we had nothing to do with these wars. Really. So we have individual, family. Ancestral. Ancestral and world. Yeah, we're not done. Oh, no. This is where it really gets hairy. No wonder why everybody has bad luck. <laughs> right, right. You know why? And then uh, there is galactic karma. Holy God. And there's universal karma. Oh, boy. And this is what freaked me out. Oh, my God, I couldn't believe the lesson I learned on this one. You know, spirit has a funny way of giving presents. Sometimes they're not always so much fun. Hmm, um, yes, let's so. see, it was my birthday some years ago. I can't remember the exact time. And I and I got a present. The present was a terrible stomach ache. <laughs> ah. I couldn't get rid of it. We did chakra clearing. We did balance. We did everything we could think of. We did clearing. Uh, of any spirits and uh, one of my girlfriends stopped by with a, a big batch of flowers that she would pick from her garden every year and she was kind of like the person who could really do the chakras really good it was like her specialty so I asked her to help and so she's working working nothing so I, I called another friend and she got the answer she got the piece of the puzzle you know because we all get pieces of the puzzle she says it's karmic when you step into another dimension or another level after you've passed a test, you open up the whole bit of karma that's in that level or dimension that you've experienced from before, other lifetimes. In the present state of being. Yes. So I had, I had reached another level that was higher than the one I was at, and it opened up all this karmic. So I, I, if I recall, we had to run a couple of karmic transmutation sessions before my stomach ache would go away on my birthday. That was my, that was my present, so I would learn that. <laughs> Isn't that uh -huh. fun? So, uh, you know, it took a couple of days for that stomach to uh, feel better again. Really? That long? Oh, yeah, because, uh, you know. Zantac didn't help. <laughs> just one. We did one. That, that didn't quite do it and had to do one the next day. Really? And then finally could clear that clear that chakra out wow amazing yeah yeah and that was a karmic lesson so um and, and that's one of the things one day you can have no karma the next day you can go to a <coughs> god bless Thank you. you can go to another higher space because within dimensions are levels 12 levels and each time you graduate another level you get another test and so oh, well, we're always being tested yeah God is always putting stuff in front of us. Let me see what you do with this. Let me see if you go the right way or the wrong way, if you make the right decision or the wrong decision. God wants to know what we're going to do with everything. Well, yeah, and he, you know, he can see it all. P people, and he can you know. see it all. And he, he'll know, he knows what we're going to do, but he still gives us the test right so that we could prove it that's true that's true so you know that was my uh, karmic lesson for the day was that i went into another level and therefore incurred that karma well whatever's going on in your life and especially if there's something that's causing stress or turmoil you always have to ask what am i supposed to learn from this that's right you're right okay you suppose you're not supposed to say oh woe is me and have a pity party you're supposed right. to say, let me see now, I would like to, and you put it out, you put questions out to the universe. Universe, what am I supposed to learn from this experience? And the universe will give you the answer. Yeah, that's true. And you know, oftentimes we forget to, um, to ask the questions, and that's the case for anything to do with ever getting good answers. You gotta have the good questions. Well, yeah, nobody's gonna give you an answer if you don't have a question. There you go. You know, and, 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 and when it comes to looking for uh, favors from God and from the angels, you have to ask. You can't, uh, A-S-K, uh, ask and you shall receive. So well, you shall fi find, knock and it will be opened to you. Well, that's right. That's true because of free will, they can't do anything for us against our will, so we have to give them permission. That's right. Permission and requests. Yeah, I, in fact, I, I told my angels a long time ago that they, to please help me in any way that's for my highest good, you know, well, that's good give idea. them permission because otherwise they can't intervene all the time. They can't unless you ask. 
So it kind of was open door policy in a way, you know what well, I mean? That's a good idea. This way, if you absolutely need something at a certain moment and you're forgetting to ask because you're so engrossed in it, right? they it, know, oh, well, she needs this, and she said she gave us permission already. Right. So, you know, most people I found um, actually need somewhere between 30 and 50 sessions of karma. So because you can't do it too often, maybe only once or twice a month, um, so it don't snowball, mm -hmm. it could take you two or three years to get out of that rut. Really? Yeah, people think, oh, I went to one karma class and I'm free. <laughs> Sorry, it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> I mean, if all the karma was released right then, you'd probably ha die, you know what I mean, or something like that. Well, yeah, there's only uh, so much of anything you can take at one time. Right, so that's why it's so important to only do it once or twice a month and every couple of weeks. what do you do? Well, I say much. the prayer, and I usually like to do these things um, when I go to bed or when I'm just sitting quietly because um, the energy, you're, you're the acupuncture point for that energy to flow, and if you're running around, you're not going to get it, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, and if it takes, let's say it takes, uh, when you first get started, maybe an hour and a half. Well, you don't just say the prayer and then run around and do your chores and everything you know you sit there for an hour and a half especially in the beginning and you may be very well, tired so after like meditating yeah yeah i what i do is i like to go in and watch what's happening because you know uh you'll start i mean if you are in tune with yourself and this is where you learn most things is by going within because we have the answer with being a part of god himself so you know uh, i you can see visions and get um, inspiration, hear things, see so things. this is just by saying this prayer and sitting quietly and for an hour. Yeah, and, and yeah. more or less meditating, you and know. Med more or less yeah. meditating. And meditating could be uh, a lot of different things. You could be sitting there just thinking about things and just, just, just keeping your concentration on your thoughts or do a, a, a transcendental meditation, which is with a... Um, uh, a, a mantra of some sort just keep repeating it with your eyes closed for 20 minutes a couple times a day now when I'm not doing it with energy medicine or, or transmuting energy or something like that I like to do a working meditation or walking meditation because I'll tell you if I just sit there and, and chant I my mind will just wander oh I yeah well that's what happens yeah and then you just I prefer to have complete silence and do my chores or whatever and I'll just get Around in the, the flow house, wash the dishes yeah the whatever the yeah get and in just, the flow just have your thoughts into yourself yeah and my favorite uh, meditation is when I'm out in the woods walking around you know, so taking that would a walk. Be a walking meditation. Walking where, meditation. And what are you doing with your mind during? The um, just meditation? looking at the trees, the birds, enjoying. The yeah, enjoying, and you're just in the now moment, and you're not letting your mind wander. You're just in, you're in the now, and that just when you get some of oh, your look clearest. Look at the blue bird over there, and look at how nice that tree looks, and all kinds of stuff. A lot of people get their best inspiration in the shower or tub because water amplifies it. Yeah. I mean, how many times when you take a shower or a bath, you suddenly the light bulb goes on? Sometimes, yeah. So because the uh, the water is amplifying the thought process and the information coming in. Mm -hmm. So that works out well, too. But what I do, even though the majority of my uh, karma is transmuted, periodically I go in and you, you find that, oh, you may have a little bit of personal or you may have a lot of family or you may have a, a, some ancestral and so forth. But basically, um, you know, when you especially clear the ancestral line, that means if you have any relatives that have kids or your own children, they won't suffer the same bad effects. As the, uh, for the ancestral part. Right. Right, because, because you're you, working on clearing it. Right, you've you've banished it, you've transmuted it. So you've tried to avoid this bad karma coming down on your children, exactly, or, or your relatives' children, so that they might lead a, a different, uh, a better life. And for instance, a lot of people um, take on a serious disease, like let's say karma, uh, like cancer or AIDS, right? Now let's say it cancer runs in your family, right? So that could be the way that that family line has decided to clear their family karma and ancestral karma. 
And that can be done by the gene is inserted because that's how they decide it. But then there's also uh, energy techniques that you can repair and clear any genes that are defective or that aren't, aren't beneficial for you sure. or whatever. So, you know, you would, uh, you, you would ask God and God gets your medical team and your angels in there and fixes you right up so that then your downline doesn't get cancer no more. You well, see? But in, but in the meantime, you have to deal with it. Or it can be resolved. Or, yeah, well, can, yeah, the people have been cured of it. That's one of the reasons that it keeps coming back with cancer a lot of times is because you can heal cancer all you want in the physical, but until you've resolved it up there on a spiritual basis, emotionally, mentally, it, you know, it's there as a lesson or as karma, so you've got to repair those things for it not to come back. So in other words, you have to get straightened out with God. Exactly. And in, in order to resolve your health issues. Yeah, people don't realize that, okay, you know, you, uh, a lot of, but, but a lot of people who have had cancer, they do realize. You know what they've said? When I was diagnosed with that, I learned so much mentally, emotionally. I learned to treat each day as a gift. But you, you know, know something I have known a couple of people, several people, uh, one that used to be very close to me but isn't anymore, who didn't learn a blessed thing from mm -hmm. having cancer or any other disease. This person still went along, went ahead and did damage to others, uh, reached out to hurt, and didn't learn a blessed thing. And I don't think that person has learned anything either uh, still. And yet there are so many that do learn to take it as a true life journey and... Um, and learn so much from it. Turn another page in the book. You know what I mean? This person doesn't sound like they learned a bit. Not a blessed thing. This yeah. person continues to try to hurt. That's a sin. Well, you know, on the other hand, there are dark beings and there are light beings, and that could be a dark being, and they like nothing more than the light and torture in those who are good. And it also could be misguided as well. Oh, yeah, that's true. I know that this person is probably very misguided by someone very beautiful. But what are you going to do? That's true, too. People do get evil influences, and that's another thing. That's true. You know, I mean, you could be a, a nice person and have an evil influence in your life, but you like this person so much that you'll do whatever they tell you. You know, and including go reach out to hurt somebody else. That's true. You know? That's very true. You know, so um, anyway, um, with the karma thing, I would imagine that, one of the things that give me, gives me real hope, though, for mankind is that when we fully move into the fifth dimension, which we're, we're somewhat in it now, I, karma may be no more. Because now we've graduated that game where you keep coming back to learn lessons. You know, like I have some girlfriends who say, I am never coming back to this planet. I've People are myself. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, Earth is a school. Earth is that's a school, true, true. and so um, you know you have what they call star <laughs> seeds coming in to help mankind, and then you have these Nimrods who are human, uh, mm -hmm. and they're not star seeds. I mean, star seeds are in a human body, but then there's just regular humans too, and um, and they don't recognize that they have a teacher in their midst who is a star seed who's supposed to be there to teach them, their spiritual teacher. Uh -huh. And um, so, yeah, I, I have heard that from so many of my friends. I am never coming back to this planet. People are stupid. <laughs> well, that could be, uh, that's kind of an understatement, though, because a lot of people really don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I know, I know, <laughs> I know. So hopefully. And have no understanding of any of this. And they're just worried about themselves. There's some people that are just into themselves. I just me, 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 and that's it. And then they don't. When 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 things come down on them, they want to know. Well, they have no idea why. You know. What are you gonna do? Yeah, that's true. You know. So, karma is a whole ball of wax. The main thing to remember is transmutation. Transmutation, not clear. And um, I'll put the prayer up on my website within the next day or two. And so people can do this. And it's also <coughs> important to ask God to clear out and protect your house so that you have a peaceful space to live in. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, um, one of the things I do is um, 
very often I'll put a white light of protection around myself. Yeah. White light of protection around those I love. And a red light of protection around objects like your house or your car, or something like that. That's what had to protect them. Red light of protection. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, so whenever I leave my house, especially if nobody's there, when I'm leaving it alone, I, I, I just, as I'm pulling out the driveway, I look back and I have a red light of protection around the house. See, now, that is a temporary protection, and I've tried all types of things over many years, uh, similar to what you do. What I found to be most effective is to call on God and ask God to send the bubble of the Holy Spirit down around bubble. my household. Yes, bubble too. Yeah, and what happens is um, you psychics who have sight actually see something like a fog leaving their house. And then every um, and then you after that, that's permanent protection. You just need to ask for God to close any wormholes, portals, and vortexes each day and clear out the house of any spirits being creatures not for our highest good, you know? And then basically you're sealed in a peaceful, safe environment. Um, because otherwise, I mean, a lot of times people, let's say they surround themselves with a bubble of light. Well, light attracts all beings from all universes, all worlds. So let's say it's not only the <coughs> good guys who are attracted to your light, but the bad guys. So they say, ooh, there's somebody who's <coughs> of the light and they're protecting themselves. Let's throw a spear at them. You know bad what I mean? Bad guys would be attracted to white light? Oh, yeah. Every, every being is attracted to the white light. Mm. And um, so that's one of the reasons I don't do that. And um, so, but I have found that that's the best protection. And then I, you know, I let it, leave it up to God to um, give me my spiritual protection on a personal level, not by sealing myself around the white light, mainly because, you know, we don't see as far or as high as the Godhead sees. I'm sure. You know, and there may be modifications that are needed to <coughs> make, uh, make you so you're not harmed in some manner. You know what I mean? I mean, that we may Keep not even think of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because our minds are finite. And, I mean, I think we're the kindergarten of the spirit world. <laughs> Something like that. Maybe even preschool. Huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, so that's how I do it. And I found it to be really effective. And um, so... And uh, so that sums it up, and people can try that. It's not that it's not difficult to do to send a prayer up to God. That you know, one of the mistakes people m make <coughs> who who want to be psychic is they don't listen. They just pray or talk to God, but they don't listen for the answer. You know, because that's what it is. Meditation is listening to God. Prayer is praying to God. He's talking to God, <coughs> right? Requesting him, and and meditation is hearing from God. Right. Well, this is what you got to do now. <laughs> right, right. You know, so, and one of the things, if you have not um, cleared and protected your space with the Godhead, then let's say there's a bad spirit right there. Well, he could be talking to you and not a good guy. You know what I mean? If he's in the room with you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And people don't know that the that there's time. <laughs> we only have a limited um vibration that we can see uh but there are so many like something like 999 percent more visible light spectrum where there are beings teeming around us that we just can't see because they're out of our visible light spectrum uh yeah i imagine that well i always feel though as far as like <clears throat> negative spirits are concerned i don't feel them around me i, t I always say it out loud even in my home no negative spirits are allowed here or are welcome here. Any there negative you go. spirits leave now. And you can do that because they're interacting on your free will. That's right. Because I mean, I watch a lot. I watch a lot of haunting stories and stuff like that. Yeah. And in order to have a bad spirit around, you have to invite them in, and people do invite them in, but they're not even realizing it sometimes. Oh God, yeah. You know, they they do. They invite them in, and um, well unknowingly i mean they'll come anyway they can you know if they want to they have a dislike for some person or whatever they can they can find a way in unless you have uh kept them from coming in right well that's why it, just about every night when i'm going to sleep i just say any negative spirits don't be around me 
for just positive spirits and mainly uh, you know our Lord and, uh, and 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 God, Blessed Mother, and all them. All right, stay. That's fine. Family members, loved ones, hang out. <laughs> <laughs> you know when they do too. You know what one of my friends told me, who's a clairvoyant. He said, "You know why we all need such big houses these days?" And I said, "No, why?" He said, "Because we got all of our ancestors here." We got our family members here. We got our angels. We got our well, guides. All, everybody has an entourage. Right. Wherever we go, it doesn't matter who you are, you have spirits with you. First of all, your guardian angel, your guides, right. and various family members that want to hang out with you. Right. That's so true. You and know? people don't really realize that, you know. And so it's important to realize that no matter what you do, you're never alone, really. No, you're never alone. It doesn't matter. Sometimes when I go to take a shower, I say, everybody leave me alone now. Give me some privacy, will you? <laughs> you know, I hadn't thought of doing that, but that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> I don't want anybody gaping at me while I'm taking a shower. Right. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny when you have pets, and they have better vision than humans do. You know, I mean, like, look at how they can see in the dark, right? Yeah, the cats especially. Oh, yeah. I mean, sometimes I'll watch uh, somebody's coming down the steps, a spirit, and I can't see him, but the cat's head go, <laughs> right. following them down the steps. And sometimes, you know, I'll look them up, and, and uh, they're sitting on my lap or something, and they'll stare right over my shoulder. Who's that that just arrived, you know? I mean, if they're afraid of it, they would run. They're not afraid well, of these why, spirits. You know, I mean, I have a cat now myself that I kind of inherited from a neighbor who just put it out. Anyway, though, but uh, she's with me now. I got her fixed and everything, and she's a beautiful little thing, and she's very friendly and cuddly and everything, you know, and I kind of count on her to let me know what's around because I know that she's probably more more in tune to it than even I am. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, they really, they never disconnect from the spirit world. I mean, when, when they're sleeping, they're astral traveling, flitting around, you know, they're, they're going doing everything. They can see... You know, they're probably, God knows what they're, uh, what they're doing, but I have been told that a couple of my passed over cats, they are not little cats in, in, uh, like they are here. They are huge, and they come and they protect me in the spirit world. Like, let's say a giant panther or a giant tiger, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. that, yeah, instead yeah. of a little house cat, they can be very big in the spirit world. Right. <laughs> you oh, know? I imagine they could. I imagine. But, uh, but yes, animals are very uh, intuitive, and they, they, they can let you know when something's up. That's why I feel very safe at home, too, because as long as she's not reacting, well, must be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, one time I remember um, there must have a bad spirit got in the house somehow, and he was near my bed, and my one cat jumped up and, really? and it must have, I knew it was a spirit because, I had a big picture behind the in the hallway, and he must have fallen back because it knocked the picture over. And then I jumped up out of bed and I ran out there, and I see one of the other pet cats, and they're chasing like this. So it must have turned into a snake, you know, about the reptilians, right? Really? So he's chasing like he's chasing a snake down the down the hallway. Cat get rid of it? Oh yeah, it, it, left. it left. Didn't want to deal with the cat. <laughs> I didn't want to deal. They, it was going to be eaten one way or another, you know. Mm -hmm. So, or killed, so it, it disappeared. But uh, yeah, so you never know one of those, when are they gonna uh, reappear. But ultimately, um, what people, to sum up the, the thing about the karma is, people need to be aware of this. And if anybody says they can take you anywhere, back to the beginning whatsoever, or back out into outer space, uh, and delete all your karma in, in one session. I've checked on this uh, on a spiritual basis, and I don't believe that's true at all. Mm -hmm. So um, it's wishful thinking is what it is. To be able to just... Yes. Just get rid of the karma. Yeah. Well, you know, there's no just getting rid of it if you have... Um, done things that call for karma to be in your life. Like um, the example God gave to me one day was he says, you know, let's say there's a, an abuser who abuses their wife and their children and slaps them around, beats them up, black eyes, broken ribs, etc. Well, 
for that person to learn, their healing would be somebody beats them up, breaks their arm, yeah, breaks right. their That's leg, what, what and then they true. know not to do it no more. Yeah, because they felt the pain. Yeah, they felt the pain. But who would think about a healing being something so painful? I, I mean, I did not connect those dots until I was in told. Other, in other words, the lesson of, of, of what's, what happened, right. what the person did, would be uh, having it done to them would be their healing to understand that, that would, this is what's going on that this is what you did now you got it back right right and you know when uh, you know a lot of times i think that people that do that they've never sometimes they might be they're like the psychopaths for instance okay supposedly they don't feel pain they don't feel emotional pain mental pain they have no emotions so they're you know they do these horrid things so that they can feel something that's their that un unconsciously that's their goal you mean like hurting somebody mm -hmm. or hurting an animal or uh, whatever to feel something to feel something hmm. i've yeah. read that somewhere really mm -hmm. yeah you know that's so in other words do you think that a person like a psychopath doesn't have any control and and because of that would be exempt from the the, the karmic law no i don't really think so um, um i mean like let's look no. like let's look at ted bundy i mean he was so charming and intelligent he was educated he was good looking but yet he, he lured all those women in and murdered them yeah you know i mean i would say that that's the uh images of a psychopath of course somebody that was that had no heart no feelings no emotion no uh no compassion and yet, you look at that person, see, this is the sneaky thing about psychopaths. They can be as charming and as wonderful and put it on and say one thing and do the complete, complete opposite. Mm -mm. I you don't know? think I've ever known anybody like that, and I hope I never do. Yeah, well, you know, you don't really know and, unless you just know because they're so charming and entertaining, you know. Yeah. I mean, they've learned to master what, how to behave, how to how uh, what they should say in a sad situation what they should say in a happy situation that they should smile in a happy situation and frown or cry in a sad situation but like they taking acting lessons <laughs> yeah but they truly don't feel those emotions right right mm -hmm. wow so um for the purpose of this um lesson on karma i will put the prayer up on my website which um, is now adolfineshepherd.com within the next day or two and you can go there and pass it out and read it and, and, uh, it and all that. you know what i recommend people do get a calendar like uh, most people that are in uh, a businessman or a businesswoman keep a calendar mm -hmm. and let's say um you uh find out you need 30 sessions of karma transmutation well let's say you go to uh, the first date you're going to do it and you put uh 30 and then a month from there you put 29 and then you put the next time you know you mark it on your calendar as you go out until you get down to zero right. and then you know you're done because people forget when the last time it was they did it did they remember to do it when they were supposed to to keep their you know to keep their progress on track in other words this prayer doesn't have to be said like every day oh god no that would be the worst because then it's going to snowball uh-huh so you do it like twice a month something like that. i would do it uh years past it would only be once a month but because everything is sped up so much i think it can be done every two weeks uh -huh. for most people mm -hmm. unless someone's really frail i mean if somebody's very frail maybe not maybe only once a month uh -huh. but as a general rule i think you're safe once a month and if you if you feel strong uh then every two weeks but then if you see it start to snowball on you then you back off to once a month now how do you know something is snowballing I mean, when the shit starts hitting the fan left <laughs> and right <laughs> oh my god hey i oh i said a curse I word you said something you might have to <laughs> okay might have to okay when when it hits the fan <laughs> <laughs> Let me say it like that in case they delete right, that right, part. Right, right. Maybe they'll blur that out. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Maybe we'll get away with it. Uh, but the um, so that's Everybody what you want to remember. The expression, so yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's the truth. It's the truth. Who you know? know that expression. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Well, as it had it happen. <laughs> I know. When you see that happen, and every day, and you say, "What's going on?" 
fun. Now, you know, you know your snowball. The stuff hitting the fan, meaning bad stuff coming down. On pretty it? much, unless if it's good, you don't want to stop it, right? Well, right. You mean, but so you wouldn't stuff, even be concerned. You know, oh, I just won money, and oh, uh, this I'll month, take some more money in two whatever, weeks. You know, right? Well, you, know, you don't want to. You don't have to stop it then, right, but right. you want to stop it if it's snowballing on a negative basis. Right. And ease back a little. But, you know, you have to have a calendar. If you don't have a calendar, you don't get nothing done. Well, yeah, you're going to mark things down. Of course, you got to know. Yeah. I mean, just like, like if you have to take a certain medication every two weeks, you better put it on a calendar. So right. Know, on every two weeks. Right. Did I take it last week? Do I have to take it next week? Well, when Whatever. did I do that? You know, exactly. when did I do that? Exactly. You know, you know so. what I mean? So, well, you know, that's that. Well, this was really very interesting, Adolfina. We, we, you know, I learned a lot. I hope our audience has learned a lot. And uh, we have to uh, close now, but um, I, I, I'm sure that we, we, we put out a lot of information just now, and it was wonderful, and thank you very much. Oh, and you're welcome. Thank you for coming to the studio early today to do this with me. <laughs> oh, you're uh, quite welcome. And now we're about to go and do your show with Tommy G for uh, your uh, God's Way Yacht today. Right. Which will come on right after this show. So everybody, thank Tune you so in. much. Tune in. <laughs> and take care, everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs> that was